If you're looking to start a new grassroots football club, this is the video to watch. My name is Tabriz and this is the Amateur Football Channel and this channel I talk about grassroots football, non-league football. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Okay, so let's replace this laptop with a piece of paper. The first thing that you're going to need is a secretary. Excuse my handwriting. I apologize. So this person will liaise with the league that you're in. It will liaise with your ref, your opponents. This like particular person will chase up fees, any kind of late fees, and you know, literally kind of look at the club as a general, just to make sure certain things are running okay. So what else that you're gonna need is a treasurer. And this person will take care of all of the money. Money, 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 money. Literally making sure that everyone has paid their signing on fees um, and just to make sure that everything is above board. You, you don't really want to be running a club at grassroots level at a loss because it's not money that we, are, we will actually get back. So this person, whoever they are, you have to have to trust. You need a, um, a strong collective of people who are dedicated, people who you can trust and people who can chip in and actually do different roles as well. Sometimes the secretary and the treasurer could be the same person. But if you can find say four or five people that can at least help out, you know what? That, is, that in itself is a godsend. So, treasurer. After that you would uh, need the gaffer. The manager. This particular person, as people know in football, will check the availability of players, make making sure that the players are, are going to be at the right ground, calling calling players, picking the formation, pick, picking the team. You know, do not think that this job is easy. Trust me, I've been a manager for five years. There is a lot of hard work that goes into this role. Possibly, the, the, the gaffer may speak to the treasurer or the gaffer may even know him, him or herself who's paid what. And sometimes that can determine who starts or who's in the 11. Because again, we have to try and be fair at this level of football. The people that contribute the most, you would think hopefully they'll get more game time. Sometimes it works like that, sometimes it doesn't. But again, this, this is the reason why these, these three people, communication is the key. After the gaffer, of course, you're gonna need the players. In my own experience, if you're kind of looking to sign a certain amount of players, I would go anything between 18, to 25. Players will drift in and out. Players have other commitments either on a Saturday or on a Sunday um, and you just want to cover your back especially when it's the away games and especially when it's in, in those cold cold months. People don't really want to be venturing out of their houses especially if the results are not going your way or you know you're not in any cups or you know you're or like the league title is is like nowhere to be seen. You want people who are going to be dedicated. Something that I've experienced is, especially at the beginning, you may want to kind of go with the more dedicated players, but that could be a video that I might touch upon in depth later. So now you've got these, now you want to enter yourself into a league. So you can find this information from your local FA, you can Google, and again, it all depends on where you're based and the league will, will decide exactly what division that you may start in. You know, it's kind of not easy because of course there are like some like leagues 
that are more competitive than others but it all depends on where most of your players are based another thing that you have to do is literally find out or well not find out but get home ground you can find this information from your local council think about also looking at schools think about colleges think about universities depending on where you're based i'm like based in london so possibly think about using 4g pictures so when it kind of comes to the to the kind of winter months where it's you know wet and rainy you don't want a lot of your games to be called off if you've you know if you've got an all weather pitch then like you know that you'll be playing week in week out they do cost a little bit more but you kind of don't want to go through a period where you'll play one week and then games are called for two three four five weeks and then all, all of a sudden you are playing double headers so you've got your secretary you, you've got your treasurer you have your manager you, you have your players you've entered yourself into a league you've got your home ground now you have to pay for everything this is not free I would advise, if you can, to pay for everything at once. And I know it's very easier said than done, but that will cause you less headache later on. Trust me, I've been there. The more you pay for at the beginning, the the less stressful it will become. So what I'm gonna try and do is kind of break down a few costs or try and break down like a few things that you may have to pay for depending on where you're based and if it's a, if it's a youth league, league that you're looking to enter, if it's an adult league, it all really depends. But again, this is just my own experience. The first thing is the FA and league Affiliation. I haven't I got space to, to spell affiliation, but that means affiliation. You've got to pay that regardless. You have to pay that. That's something that you cannot walk away from. Once you've kind of paid everything there, you may want to be in any cups and the cups are not free. I like believe there's possibly two to five cups that you, that you may want to enter. All of them vary in price from 15 pounds to 30 pounds, depending on how big the competition is. Insurance. Public liability insurance. Every single club that are in grassroots are insured for any broken legs, well, not just broken legs, but just injuries, injuries on the pitch. Every single club is insured. Not a lot of people actually kind of think about that. So, you know, if you are injured on the pitch and it affects your work life, please contact your club and see exactly what, what they can do to help you claim. Home matches, home matches. Okay, so let me explain that. So home, home matches. Uh, actually, let me kind of even probably bread off even more. Or should I just round it up? Home matches and pitches. Your pitches will probably be your biggest cost, your, your like biggest outlay. When I say home matches, I'm talking about your, your referee costs. As the home team, you will pay the referee. Cup competitions is either you, you, you go halves or the away team pays for it. And again, it all depends on the league that you are affiliated in. And again, things, you know, things change if you're in a youth league, Saturday football, Sunday football, it, you know, all of it's different, but this is from my own experiences. First aid kit. It's something that people do actually forget, but like you need an FA certified first aid kit. Um, you can kind of get them from your league. Um, I believe they cost about 25 to 35 pounds, but every single team needs a first aid kit. Club stuff. Club stuff, okay. When I say club stuff, I'm talking about equipment. I'm talking about balls. I'm talking about bibs. I'm talking about the the kit as well. You will you will go through so much stuff. Like that is burn away money. 
money that you will that you will not get back however there is a way around it if you can get a sponsor you know what that will definitely cut down the cost if not i would say match balls you'll probably need six or seven match balls possibly more if you train and again training facilities you might ha have to pay for that kits can can like go from between 150 pounds to 500 pounds depending on, on how snazzy you want the kit there's so much stuff that you want to cover however you have to also weigh up do you want a snazzy kit or do you want to use some of that money into other things especially at the beginning it's all about winning games so you don't want to be spending unnecessary money so if you can borrow a kit if it's someone that's giving it away you can go on gumtree you can go on ebay like there are places where you can get really really cheap kits so really really kind of think about your costs especially at the beginning and something that a lot of people again do not think about a club bank account really think about getting a club bank account you don't want money coming in and out of your personal account because it's very easy to to like lose track of who's paid what if people want history if people want a reference it's honestly it can be a nightmare so just get yourself a club bank account or you can open up another uh, account under your personal so then at least you know exactly what's going in and out at the end of the day you smile and enjoy the journey grassroots football is not easy football in general is not easy saturday or sunday enjoy enjoy what you do just go out there smile and again it all depends on what your ethos is it all depends on what your end journey is if you kind of want to compete in the division ones or the premiers of your own um league then you know what of course you you'll be aiming to kind of get some players in at a better ability to kind of get there quicker if you just want a bit of a kick around and you know if you just want just to have like a bit of a laugh with your friends and you know what just bring people in that you want to spend that saturday or that sunday but please just enjoy and smile hopefully uh i've explained that my name is tabris the amateur footballer please check me out on all short social media platforms hopefully you've liked this video please like subscribe and if there's any questions i am here for you have a great day stay safe and i'll see you guys soon